All right. So again, uh, we're going to look at uh, springs and the conservation of energy. And so I have a situation that, uh, well, I never want to be a part of, but uh, an elevator uh, cars uh, at rest, that's terrible English, uh, has its cable snap <laughs> and descends towards a safety spring at the bottom of an elevator shaft. Now, if the spring constant is 460 newtons per meter, find the distance uh, that the, sa the safety spring is compressed. All right, so we want to find out how, uh, how much our safety sp spring will compress at this point. All right, so again, I read the situation. I got a bunch of uh, information up here. All right, and so we're going to figure out uh, well, using some values or writing down some values. So the first one here is, uh, let's see here, the spring constant is 460 newtons per meter. All right, so I'm going to write that down. Let's see here. Whoa, big letters. We're going to go smaller than that. Uh, where we have K uh, is equal to 460, again, newtons per meter. So a very strong spring. Uh, what else we know? We go with the mass of the elevator car. So I'm going to throw that down here. Oh, it, it's a thousand kilograms. Now, initially, uh, our initial velocity is V1 here at three meters per second. All right, so this thing's moving as it's coming down. We have a height of four meters above that spring. All right, so it's moving, it's going to hit this spring. Uh, we want to find out uh, how how uh, much that spring is going to compress to slow us down. All right, now here's the key again with the conservation of energy, right? We have a certain amount of energy before or initially when our elevator car is traveling. So here's situation one right here. And that is equal to the energy after. And that is when we safely land on the spring, safely. And that's our second situation down here. So our elevator car is going to drop down on our spring and it's going to compress it. Uh, and we're going to find out the distance that that spring is safely compressed. All right, now, energy before. We have our car up here. It is moving at a certain velocity. And in fact, we also have some height. All right, and so what we have initially is, uh, let's deal with the height, is we have gravitational potential energy, plus we have some kinetic energy. All right, and then we're gonna land on the spring. And when we land on the spring, we are neither going to have height, because we're landing, and we're not gonna have speed, because we're gonna slow down, but what we are going to do is store uh, energy into the spring, which would be our elastic potential energy. All right, now I'm going to replace those values, uh, well, those, those sig or notation with values. All right, so our gravitational potential energy is always mass times gravity times height. And then we're gonna uh, add our uh, kinetic energy, which is one half uh, times mass uh, times our velocity squared. So that's our kinetic energy. And all of that energy from our height and our speed is going to be stored into elastic potential energy. So one half K times X squared. All right. So now I'm going to substitute in my values. Now the mass uh, is 100 kilograms. So it's got to be a little bit off because that's only about 220 pounds. I think an elevator is way, way bigger than that. But again, just uh, an example. Uh, gravity, we're on Earth here. That's for sure, 9.8. And our height right now from the spring, we are up uh, four meters up. All right, because uh, the ground level of our spring is considered, uh, or the top of our spring is considered ground level. All right, uh, now kinetic energy. Uh, one half. Well, again, I'm going to go with 0.5 there. Our mass, again, we got 100. And velocity, this thing is traveling at 3 meters per second. All right, that's all the energy we have. 
All right, and let's see here. Now, uh, on the other side, we have our one half kx squared. So uh, let's see what we know here. Well, half is 0.5. Uh, our k, the spring constant, we know that. It's 460 newtons per meter. So every meter that uh, spring is compressed, it is going to force back with 460 newtons. And then we have, of course, uh, x squared. And that's what we want to find out is how much is this spring com compressed? All right, well, let's uh, do some math. Uh, let's see, three numbers, multiply them 100 times 9.8 times 4. I can actually get that number, and let's see here. And I get uh, 3,920. All right, uh, again, make sure I'm going to skip a step here. Well, not skip a step, but I'm going to go a little bit quicker here. I got 0.5 times 100 uh, times 3 squared. Well, I got to do 3 squared first. So 3 squared first is 9. Uh, times 100 is 900, and half of that, that's 450. I did that right in my head. All right, not bad. Uh, equals, uh, let's see, uh, again, Bedminster, 0.5 times uh, 460 times x squared. Well, half of 460 is 230. And then, of course, I have my x squared. All right, just simplifying things. Let's see, we put the 3,920 together uh, with 450, and I get uh, 4,370. And that's going to equal my 230x uh, uh, squared. All right, so uh, now i got to solve. And so I'm going to divide both sides by 230. And because it's x squared, unfortunately, that's not going to get me the answer here. Uh, but it'll get rid of my 230 here. And so I take my uh, 4,370 and I divide it by 230. I'm getting, oh. Just a round number there of 19. And again, that equals x squared. And to find out the compression of this spring, hopefully it's not in one centimeter, right? That'd be a little hard on the legs if uh, your elevator's dropping four meters and you're moving at three meters per second. But so we'll see here. I take the square root of 19 and uh, I end up with, again, going to two decimal places. Well, it says 4.3588, so it's going to be 4.36 meters. So a nice slow landing. That's quite a bit of, uh, a, that's a huge spring, which you would need if you wanted to slow down an elevator if the cable snapped. All right, so this would be four meters. And so this spring, this distance here would actually, given my diagram, would be like way down here. 4.36 meters, that's how big our spring would actually be. If that makes you feel a little more comfortable next time you uh, decide to get into an elevator. All right, uh, so again, all the energy was used, uh, the gr gravitational potential energy because of that height and the kinetic energy, that's all this uh, elevator had, is totally being converted into elastic potential energy, safely and not uh, used to cause damage. <laughs> All right, uh, next up, our next example. Again, I want to throw some angles at you here. So a block uh, with a mass of two kilograms, right here is our block, uh, is held against the spring with a spring constant of 250 newtons per meter. Okay, the block uh, compresses the spring 22 centimeters from its natural equilibrium position. So that's its rest position. Equilibrium is another way of saying rest or just kind of your normal position. Now, after the block is released, it travels uh, along a frictionless surface and then up a frictionless ramp. All right, so our block is going to be released. It's gonna travel a bit, and then it's going to shoot up our slope. All right, so it says, determine the elastic potential energy stored in the spring before the mass is released. All right, so uh, again, our formula for elastic potential energy is EE is equal to one half uh, times K X squared. All right, and so it looks all we need is the K and the X. So uh, I look and I read my question here. Uh, there's our K here, our spring constant, which is uh, 250. And newtons per meter, so it's not as strong as our uh, elevator uh, spring. 
Uh, our K, how much it's being, uh, the spring is being altered. Again, this one's being compressed, which is 22 centimeters. Again, not our standard units. Uh, I can divide that by 100 and I get 0.22 meters. All right, again, got to be in standard units here. All right, well, that's all I need, right? So, well, substituting in. So I have my elastic potential energy uh, is equal to, again, half 0 0.5. Uh, K is a solid 250. And I have my 0 0.22 squared. There we go. And as I've mentioned before, you got to follow bad mess, right? So uh, 0 0.5 times my 250. Uh, 0.22 squared. No clue. Let's see here. Go to the calculator. 0.22 squared. It's a decimal, so it's probably going to be a smaller number, and it is. I get uh, 0 0.0484. I could go to two decimal places. I'm just going to go to three because it's already in my calculator. All right, so times 250 and then times 0.5. And I end up with, if I multiply my three numbers, get just a simple 6.05 uh, joules of energy all right so that's how much energy is stored all right so uh b calculate uh the speed of the block uh, as it travels along the horizontal surface okay now uh if it's traveling around the horizontal surface and again it is frictionless so we're not losing any energy to friction so what that means is that all that elastic potential energy is going to be converted and it's going to be converted into movement energy which is called kinetic energy all right so our ee is equal to our ek and so now if i uh well substitute into my formula here uh ee i already know that right it's 6.05 we've already established that's how much energy is stored in the spring uh, kinetic energy, again, the formula there, we got uh, one half uh, times your mass uh, times your velocity uh, squared. Okay, uh, on this side, so we're still 0.6.05. Oh, I need the mass. All right, so let's go up. Uh, two kilograms, that's all it was. Okay, uh, so let's see here. So I got a 0 0.5, that's my half. My mass is two. And then I have my V squared. All right, so uh, let's see here. So I still got my 6.05. Gonna simplify the right-hand side of my equation a little bit. Ah, uh, look at this, a half of two, uh, that's just one. So I just have one V squared. All right, and then of course, the last thing to get rid of my little two, I'm gonna take the square root of both sides. And now I can find out that this object, when it's released, and before it gets to the ramp, it's going to be 2.46 meters per second is how fast that block is going to move. All right. Uh, is that it? No. No. All right. How far along the ramp will the tra uh, block travel before it stops? So, again, here's our situation. All right. Uh, I got that. All right, so I want to know the distance D here. So let me erase that here. So it's going to travel up the slope. I want to know the distance D. All right, now it's going to be a little bit tougher. So I'm going to draw that a little bit here. Here's our slope. All right, we want to know our distance D. How far up the slope does it travel? And again, we have our uh, H, or uh, you could look at it as our delta Y over here how much you're going up. And uh, what was the angle here again? 30 degrees. All right, so there's our 30 degree angle. Now, here's something that we can calculate first, is that when it stops, that's key here, is when it stops, that means that all your elastic potential energy, which turned into your kinetic energy, which uh, we had a value at as at 6.05 joules, it all then, because now we have no motion, no spring, all we have is it's going up the ramp, 
all that energy is now being converted into EG, our gravitational potential energy. And so what we're looking at now is the fact that 6.05 uh, is equal to, again, our formula for gravitational potential energy is mass times gravity uh, times our height. All right, so uh, make a substitution here. So I have 6.05 is equal to the mass. It was a two kilogram object. Uh, we're still on Earth, so acceleration due to gravity is still 9.8 uh, times the H. All right, uh, so again, just uh, simplifying things 6.05. Is equal to two times that, I believe it's 19.6 times h. All right, and uh, of course, dividing by my numerical coefficient here, so I'm going to divide by 19.6 on both sides. And so my height is going to be 6.05 uh, divided by 19.6, and I end up with zero. 0.31 meters. That's this distance right here. 0 0.31. That's the height. What do we want to know? We want to know D here. So I'm just going to use a little trigonometry here because this is a right angle triangle. Uh, we have an angle here. Our height is the opposite. We want to know D here, which happens to be the hypotenuse. And so I'm going to use sine 30 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is our 0.31 divided by our hypotenuse, which is D. All right, sine 30. I believe that's a half. I should know that. I'm a math teacher here. Yeah, yeah. All right, 0 0.5 it is, is equal to 0 0.31 divided by D. And, of course, you probably know where I'm headed here. Fraction equaling a fraction. And so uh, simplifying things here, I have 0.5 times D, because I'm cross multiplying, is equal to 1 times 0.31, which is just going to be 0.31. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 0.5. And let's see here. Those are gone. Uh, so I'm taking half, cut that in half. Let's see here, 0.31, or actually I'm not cutting it in half, I'm dividing it by, or sorry, I'm dividing it by half, and I end up with 0.62 meters that this block would slide up the slope. There we go. All right, so again, that's the conservation of energy. Here, the energy was uh, transformed uh, three times, or twice, I should say, into three different. It started off as, elastic potential energy then through this stretch here it became kinetic energy and then finally up at the slope it had both kinetic and gravitational potential energy but when it stops then you're just down to gravitational potential energy